So today we get to welcome Malika Amandi to the Converts with Confidence Summits. And I'm super excited to speak with Malika today. Malika is a national speaker and coach based in Massachusetts. And in 2017, she founded the Center for Women's Voice, where she teaches women how to communicate effectively and authentically without apologizing or overanalyzing. And I'm sure already like, antennas are going up like how in the world is that even possible Malika would you first tell the audience tell us uh, what inspires you to do the work that you do and and what motivated you to start your business sure Uh, well thank you so much for having me I'm excited to participate in this summit Um, you know everything that I teach my whole coaching philosophy It really comes from my own experience working in male-driven industries. Um, I've had so many different, uh, been in so many different career spaces from the entertainment industry to Silicon Valley to academia and then the military. Um, And in these kind of male-driven spaces, I really didn't feel encouraged or supported to use my voice. And that's something that is true for the majority of my clients. You know, when we feel like we don't belong or we are not uh, worthy, it can be so easy to shrink and to play it small and to get in our heads and talk ourselves out of contributing in the way that we want to. So I'm really inspired by just the belief that there is another way and that there is a future where women's voices are valued in every aspect of society. Um, You know, when I was working in the military uh, context, I was working for an outside organization that was hired by the military and doing these really big trainings for Marines. And my supervisor kind of pulled me to the side uh, one time and said, if you feel like your message isn't landing with the Marines, the male, you know, sailors, turn it over to the male co-facilitator. And, you know, it's okay. Sometimes things just sound better coming from a man. And I was really appalled. (laughs) And I also understood why I got that advice because I had been in those rooms and I I knew what my supervisor was talking about, but I felt so disheartened that that was the advice that I was given um, that was supposed to support me. It's like, oh, I can just turn it over. And I knew for myself that I was never gonna do that. And I felt like no woman should ever have to make that be the only option for her to be heard. Yeah. It's like being trained to like learned helplessness. It's like, well, just exactly. hand it off to someone else. You're it, what does it imply? It implies we're not capable. Yeah. Right? And, and our voices are the reason, like, I mean, we don't have connection without our voice and whether it's like speaking in front of people, right. Or speaking through email or speaking through um, a Facebook live or social media post. This, this is really the core, like, I think this is overlooked for so many, for so many business owners and entrepreneurs. We're so set on the perfect copy, let me copy and paste. Let me plug in a buzzword here and there. And it's not, it's like, if we haven't fixed our old paradigm, right. That we need to apologize, or we have something to apologize for, then it's still going to sound like we're guilty. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the intention behind the words, right. That comes through. And so if our intention is, you know, please, please listen to me, or, you know, it has that energy of, I don't know if I'm more, if I should even be saying this, yeah. that comes through. And that's, that's the issue. It's like exactly what you're saying, you know, addressing the, the fundamental belief behind that, you know, it's not the technical aspects of, am I talking loud enough? Or do I have the flash? Is the copy the right length or whatever? It's like, uh, do I believe that I'm worthy of taking up space? <laughs> you know, do I trust that I belong in this room that I'm in or in, to show up in somebody's email box? Do I give myself that permission to, you know, communicate and share whatever it is that I'm offering? Yeah. I remember when, well, I think a good sign to turn inside and start to work on this is like, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, you're send, you've maybe been spent sending out emails to your audience. You've been doing Facebook lives for a while, or you've been putting a, an offer out there and nobody's doing anything. Mm-hmm. I think that the next place is not to look outside, right. Is to look inside. And, and Malika, I know a large, a part of this audience struggles with 
you know, maybe call it people pleasing or like they're trying to feel accepted by people around them. There's that energy of, do you like me? (laughs) Um, Will you accept me? And just self-worth issues all around. So, and of course this ends up chasing customers away like that. And uh, in your own words, Malika, what is missing for us so that we can begin to show up with confidence? And and I know I just said a mouthful, but just (laughs) maybe briefly. I'm following, I'm tracking, I'm tracking. (laughs) Well, I think exactly what you said in that question, right? Of that, there was this energy of, you know, will you like me? (laughs) I want you to like me. I want your approval. Um, I, you know, I want you to show me that this is good enough. please say yes. Or, you know, I'm going to be really heartbroken if you don't accept yeah. what I'm giving yeah. to you. And even if those aren't the words we're saying, again, if that's how we feel inside, it can be super confusing for the person on the receiving end of that message, right? It's, it's confusing and it's unpleasant because it's a lot of pressure, right? Especially if this is someone we don't have a relationship with, or, um, you know, this is the first time they're encountering us. It's kind of like, I don't, I don't know. And, you know, one of my mentors says, uh, you know, a confused mind says no. So whatever the confusion is, it's like people just don't want to deal with that. Right. So I think the missing link is that we really have to be completely sold on ourselves and whatever it is that we're offering before we're even sharing it with other people or, um, presenting it, you know? And so what, whether or not, a particular person opts in to my offering, I know that what I've created is valuable and worthy and useful. And I think getting to that place involves some mindset work. And depending on what your product is, what it is that you're offering, it might involve some technical pieces like doing the leg leg work of testing, you know, when there's no pressure for sales or getting feedback and collecting testimonials and doing whatever it is that you need to do so that you know this is this thing is valuable and i stand by it no matter what i'm not waiting for somebody else to tell me whether or not it's a good idea mm-hmm. and whether or not that person chooses to invest in this thing i know it's solid so you know doing that work of making sure i believe in my own process and my offering ahead of time it means that when i get into that sales situation I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. And that is such a great place to be in. That's one of my like life philosophies. Like I don't want to convince anyone of anything ever when it comes to politics, anything. It's like, we're, we're all adults. We can make our choices and I'm okay with other people having different choices than me. Right. So it's not my job to convince you that this is going to work. Um, I don't need the validation. Uh, I can truly come from a place of service. You know, I have this thing and I know it can help you get the results that you want. So my intention is just to share and to give this person a clear opportunity to uh, accept that thing if it's something that they want, right? So it's, it's not about me and how good I am and, you know, anything. It's really about this other person and giving them an opportunity to opt into something that can really help them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I'm hearing here is like we need to start to unhinge ourselves, yes, our identities from our offers, you know, like and what one one amazing insight I had, and, and this audience can can take this or not, was that I realized like, wait a minute, if I put out like a Facebook post or something and nobody clicked on, I used to internalize that. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, nobody cares, or I'm not gonna. And then I realized like, wait a minute, these people don't even know me, right? <laughs> It's not personal. No idea who I am. So wait, what's really going on here? And of course, yeah. it came down to. I mean, it came down to, of course, my energy, which which kind of muddied up the process. And of course, if if our energy is in the right place, the perfect process isn't going to really make a difference. It doesn't mean you won't have clients coming in, but you're not going to be able to magnetize your dream clients. And I'm so I'm so glad you brought up that the energy of convincing. Yeah. Because what does that imply when you, when you have a need to convince, it's like, I'm, I have something to prove, like I have to earn, or I need permission. And of course, especially as we're moving into the high ticket space, a high ticket buyer does not want to play these games. They just want to know, like, you know, one, you know, is this going to help me? And two, you know, are, do, does it feel good? 
Right. And, you know, playing these games of like, hey, do you like me? <laughs> Let's face it, they're going to feel that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that, that concept of uh, what you said, unhinging yourself from <laughs> the product. And that reminds me of my, um, you know, I have a background in acting where you're auditioning and it's like, you are the, you are the product. It's your body, it's your voice, it's your image, it's your likeness. And this is probably one of the things that's helped me the most in my, you know, career with my coaching business is I'm not afraid of rejection, right? I've been rejected so many times in my life that it doesn't, I know it's not about me. It's like, does somebody like this flavor of ice cream or this flavor of ice cream? You know, I can only be the ice cream flavor that I am, you know? And, and really in, in some ways it takes being rejected a lot to get over that. But I think knowing that as you are, especially if it's something new where you're just, the product is new or you're new to selling and having these conversations is knowing that rejection does not mean anything about you. It's not about you. And so you can have that experience without internalizing it. And that's a very powerful place to be in um, because it, keeps you from being afraid of putting yourself out there. Yeah. I remember this vicious cycle of, and if, if you're watching this, if you're watching this interview, you're probably experiencing this. Like you, you get the no, thank you, or I don't have time, or I don't have the money. And rather than being curious about like, is that really the case or are they blocking themselves rather than keeping it about them? We're like, oh, you know, I, and I remember I used to get frustrated with objections because I was making it about me. And I realized, first of all, it's not fair. Like this is conversation is not about me at all. Like I'm at the goal I'm selling, like I'm not done, but I'm, I'm here. And what I, I, I this session isn't for me. It's for them. right. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was, that was the biggest insight was yeah. to, was to be curious rather than hurt. Yeah process. And I know this vicious cycle and, and Malika, how, how is there like maybe one or two strategies you can offer? How, like, how do you help your clients build confidence? Let's say they're stuck in this, this vicious cycle of like okay. getting that rejection or customers walking away, or maybe they're speaking on a presentation and people are looking at their watches. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's happened to me before, right? Like <laughs> depending on the situation. Yeah. And I think part of it is going back to that unhinging piece, right? And really leaning into empathy and knowing the person that you're speaking to, your audience, you have no idea what they're going through that day or where they are in their day or what just happened or what you, I mean, we just don't know, right? So it's really trusting that um, whatever it is that you're getting from them, it's not about you. <laughs> And that's okay. You know, if somebody yawns, they might be super tired, yeah. right? We, we just don't know. But having that empathy of like, okay, I'm not, I'm not leaning on the audience to give me validation or this person to tell me that I'm doing a good job. Mm -hmm. um, I think a big reframe that I give to my clients is that confidence is not a deficit. It's not a destination. It's not like a box to check off. You're going to work on your confidence and then it's just set, you know, set it and forget it. It's, it's not very useful to have a kind of perfectionist outlook about it. So really knowing confidence is a living, breathing dynamic that reflects how you feel about yourself moment to moment. And that means there's always um, an opportunity to, to work on that or to invest in that. Um, and that that's not a problem. If you feel like you are not, confident in a certain moment, that doesn't mean that you are not good at what you're doing, or um, it just means in that moment, you weren't feeling, you know, you weren't feeling yourself, right? So I think it's helpful to have tools to support yourself and to, you know, really trust that you'll be able to navigate those moments when you aren't feeling your best. And I think trust is such a huge part of confidence, which gets overlooked. It's like not as flashy, but I think it's kind of the root of what it means to believe in yourself is to know, okay, I can handle this situation. I can move through this emotion. I can get through to the other side. Um, you know, one of the concrete tools that I offer is, and I use this myself, um, is really being able to look back over the course of a day or a week or even a specific conversation or interaction 
and acknowledge myself for every little thing that I did. Uh, so over the course of a week, it might be like, oh, I had a great client session. Um, I cooked this meal that was tasty. I connected with a friend. Um, and actually writing these things down somewhere. Uh, if I can't think of something, it's like lower the bar, focus on anything that's net positive. You know, maybe you woke up early and did some reading one day. Maybe you, you know, slept in to take care of yourself. It's like completely subjective. But the thing is that the more you do this, it's not that your acknowledgements get more and more impressive. It's that your awareness grows and you are able to really see where you are showing up for yourself in your life. And that gets stronger. So you can look back at anything and see the ways that you are participating and growing and contributing. And that builds confidence. It's like showing ourselves the our track record, you know, because we can often just discount every single way, every, every single thing that we're doing because one thing didn't go right. Right. You know, and so it feels like, well, I don't have any, I'm not getting traction, right? So this is a way of just simply kind of building that uh, traction and awareness for yourself. So you can see how you are continuing to grow and expand. Yeah. Yeah. Really giving, like, take some pressure off, right? Because if you're putting pressure on yourself, guaranteed, it's probably the reason, one of the reasons why your customers aren't either flooding to you or they're not signing with you. Right. Right. So I think before you maybe even go into your next sales conversation, maybe you have one right after you watch this, it's like, what, what is the state you're in? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, how do you feel right now? Like, do you, I remember I used to dread sales calls. Like I, I hated consultations. I was like, and it was because of, and then it would show up with dread. And I would wonder why I was getting objections. Like, uh, you know, hmm, I got to think about it. But then I would be like, yeah, go subconsciously. I was like, yeah, go think about it. Cause I don't want to, right, <laughs> I don't right. want to do this either. <laughs> You're like relieved that it's over. Yeah. And we're, it's like, we're, we're hoping for that quick relief. Yeah. I love how you brought up that word versus like take, like really leaning in to what we really deep down want. And I know that was a turning point for me was realizing, hang on, do I really want relief or do I really want to see what we're the work, like what kind of work we can do together? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Malika, how, in what ways, or how would you approach selling or converting in your own coaching practice? I'm sure people here are really curious after everything you said, like, what is like, what is a successful process looks like? And I know this is yeah. going to be subjective and, and how has your journey been when it comes to finding your own unique value? Like what is, what do you, what, what are the qualities of yeah. someone who's authentic and unique? Well, I have, I really resonate with your experience that you just shared, you know, of um, when I first started doing discovery sessions, that's kind of the container that I have to meet potential clients. I used to get really, really nervous and very precious about it. And I felt like I had to offer up the best coaching of my life to prove that, you know, working with me was a worthy investment. So all of those things that I said not to do, you know, I had, <laughs> I had that energy of like, I'm really going to prove that I'm going to show them, I'm going to coach them so hard, you know, and what ended up happening is that I was having these really deep and emotional conversations and helping people on a certain level, but I was doing it in such a way that they felt like they didn't need to talk to me anymore. Like I was giving them so many tools and resources in that that one free consultation. And that made me feel like, yeah, we're really in it. You know, I'm, I'm their coach, but I wasn't signing people. Right. They would tell me how much they loved this conversation and it set them on this new path. And they felt like they were set for a while, you know? <laughs> and so it's kind of like, oh. I remember that. Yeah. And so I processed some of these exchanges with a mentor of mine and she wisely pointed out like, you know, Malika, you're giving too much away. <laughs> it's actually not helpful for people to feel overwhelmed <laughs> with resources or to feel like they need time to work on what we talked about, right? Like so much came up. So, you know, in my desire to prove my value, I was really focusing more on myself, right? And leaving the conversations feeling really drained, you know, cause I had coached so hard. <laughs> and yeah. So that was 
that was a problem. So I had to change my process and I've really shifted to focusing on asking just a few powerful questions and listening deeply. So the majority of the session is not me talking, it's me listening and drawing out and allowing, um, you know, the potential coachee to, to really hear their own experience to, and reflecting things back to them, right? So that they can understand, well, what is their, what is their desire? What's the desire beneath their desire? What are their pain points? And getting them to really articulate it and then making some pointed observations about what I was hearing and sharing how I could help them if we work together. So it's, it's not giving them solutions in that conversation. It's really, uh, you know, pointing out that I'm thinking about how my process would align with what it is they're sharing, and then just saying how we could work together, right? So there's this desire for more, <laughs> like, well, tell me more about that. Um, and, you know, in that process of changing my the format and really leaning into listening, you know, I've learned that a huge part of my value is the attention and the presence that I give to my one-on-one -on -one clients, you know, and people feel a certain way when I am listening to them because I give them my full focus and attention. And that's something that people don't get often. We don't encounter that in our lives very much where someone is really listening to us and able to reflect back what we're saying. So that's what goes into my discovery sessions. Um, and that helped me kind of move into that service mindset that I talked about earlier, um, where I was really showing up for this other person instead of showing up so that they could tell me that I was <laughs> worth investing in, you know, you like a little round of applause. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and that's when I started to see more people signing, right? And not, not everybody, right? But my conversion rate did go up. And when somebody didn't sign, I didn't have that kind of heaviness of resentment. Like I had wasted my time or invested too much energy in the conversation, which is how I used to feel because I was, you know, pouring so much into it. It was kind of like this personal affront, like, oh, well, why didn't they? And now it's like, it's neutral, you know, I can let people go and trust their decision. You know, I know at the point that everybody comes into a discovery conversation, they're not always ready to take that next step because of where they are in their life. Again, and it's having nothing to do with me. Um, but I, I, now I see that that whole exchange as this very kind of exciting and powerful conversation. It's so rare that we can go really deep with a stranger and kind of just cut to the chase. So I love that my work gives me the opportunity to do that. And it's, you know, it used to feel like that, that sales conversation was a hurdle, right? It was an obstacle to working together. Like, oh, if only people could just sign up or I could just get the clients. And now I really value that session because it, it is a part of the process. It's the beginning of the process. And when I do move forward to work with people, often we will refer to things that came up in that initial conversation, you know, because that is the first time they were able to see things in a certain light. And so now I know that's not an obstacle. That is actually the way through to the beginning of my process. And so that has given me a different relationship to, you know, selling as well. Yeah. We kind of set the tone. Yeah. That for the minute we get in front of them, it's like, we set the tone with our energy, with our voice, with our presentation. And I found that it was more important to show up uh, like 110% on that initial, in that first meeting versus any other time. And, and I know because we're all virtual now, for most of us are virtual now, um, I remember I used to, I, I used to have thoughts like, hmm, well, can I still stay in half my PJs and then I'll, you know, be in this top. And then I thought I was like, and maybe some of you can relate. You're like doing stuff half that, you know, half this, half that, because we're, you know, we're a lot of us are virtual, but I was like, you know what, if I'm showing up halfway with my appearance, then I'm going to show up halfway with my motivation, with my drive, with my passion and my intention. Yeah. So, and it was in that moment, it wasn't about like, how can I, how can I get clients to do anything? It was like, who do I need to be to see if there is a connection? And it yeah. this is as small a detail as like, how are you dressing? Yeah. In the first moment. Right. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I do things like I put on perfume, you know, here in my zoom world, nobody can smell me. 
right? But I know that I'm doing something a little special and different and that helps me kind of honor that this is something I'm stepping up for, you know? Because people can feel you even through Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I remember, you know, energy, I know we're talking about energy, but, and, and I know some of this audience has, has, you can't really see energy, but we feel energy and just check, like check in with yourself now. How do you feel in front of Malika? Even through Zoom, people can feel it. So we can feel energy through text messages, through yeah. emails. And it, it's like when you change how you present yourself and with every single little detail from your background, right? To the tone yeah. of your voice, to, to what you're wearing, to the words that you say. I love how you pointed out, like, I know a lot of us tend to maybe throw up in, in front of our <laughs> clients for the first time. <laughs> Because our intention is we want to help, we want to serve, right. we're not really helping them if we're just dumping a lot of stuff on them. Because a great metaphor I heard was like, imagine if you put all of this stuff you were going to tell your, your prospect up on YouTube for free, like, would they value that? Would they, would they do the work if it was a free YouTube video or do they, do they step up and do the work when they're skin in the game, when they're, when they've signed on, when they've put down that down payment? Yeah. Yeah kind of a good way to think about it. Right. Absolutely. And, and I know Malika, you often refer to our self talk, mm-hmm. our self talk, and, and this is plastered everywhere nowadays, self talk, negative talk, inner critic. Yes. Especially how it gets in the way of us building a successful coaching practice and in our ability to lead others. So yeah. we might struggle with things like who we, who are we to charge high ticket? Who are we to charge you know, a $10,000 program, who am I to be that $30,000 coach? You know, what's, what's getting in the way of us being able to be, um, you know, maybe, maybe the goal is to be more confident or to be kinder to ourselves. How can we start to show up that way? Yeah, I think this is something that so many people struggle with. And as we've talked about before, it's having those mixed messages, right? Where we're saying something out loud, but there's something else going in on our head and that there's a residue. We might feel like we're hiding it or masking it, but somehow it, it does come through. And so it really can undermine us, you know, even when everything else is going well. Um, so I think th- the biggest thing is to know that you can change your thinking. You have that power, <laughs> like our brain wired that way. And that's a huge uh, paradigm shift once you come into that, because until that moment, it's like, whatever you're thinking is just reality, right? We relate to our thoughts as facts. So whatever your negative talk is, you're just accepting that as true, right? Mm -hmm. But once you know, oh, this is, they're not, it's not reality. It's just thoughts. They're words going through my head. Mm -hmm. It's not the truth, capital T. It's just the thing that I'm saying. Even that alone can diffuse the sing of that, right? So if the thought is, Oh, I'm, I'm a terrible coach. I suck at selling. Just kind of taking a pause to say, and that's a thought I'm having, Mm. like just putting it in a little bubble, right. Even before you try to bring in the affirmations or, you know, give that thought a 180. it's just recognizing, okay, these are things that are going through and that is not me. It's not defining me. It's just a thing that is going through my head. You know, often our, our, negative thoughts do come in the form of questions. Like you mentioned, you know, who am I to charge this? Right. Yeah. And so I think another, you know, when we ask ourselves a question and this is what it's like, who's asking the question, you know, cause it's like, <laughs> it's not me, it's a voice. Right. So when we hear that question, there's some part of us that then just fills in all those answers our subconscious, like, well, I'm a nobody. I'm this, I'm, gra- I'm greedy, whatever. So if you can just intercept that question or reframe that question with a different assumption, so maybe instead of, you know, who am I to charge X, the question turns into, I wonder why my services are worth X. Mm, And then your brain will fill in those other, (laughs) from a different perspective, like, oh, because you, you know, you have all this experience because you're so committed because whatever, it's like, a very simple way, just by changing the wording of a thought to get different results. Uh, so there are little things you can do like this that 
you know, are helpful. Even talking to yourself in the, in the second person, you know, Malika, I believe in you, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, be kind, Malika, it's okay. Whatever, you know, being really um, intentional about changing your thoughts. And it's going to take time because you have decades of practice in the other direction. Right. And those nerves, there's no, those neuro pathways are really set, you know, and our brain is efficient. So it takes time and practice, but I think it's so worth it to invest in, uh, mindset practices that allow you to really, uh, be intentional about your thinking. Yeah. I love that. I love everything. Like go back and re-listen to that, like intentional thinking, you, you get to choose your thoughts and how you feel. And if you're asking how, then I know Malika has more for us as, as a free gift, but, um, yeah, that, that's often a question I ask my clients as well as like, are you just hearing the voice in your head? Or are you an active participant in the conversation in your head? Are you, yeah, I love that. I love that intercepting. Are you, are you actually pausing to say, Hey, hang on, hang on a second. Yeah. Who is saying, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> if that, if you're struggling with this, that's the first question to ask who, and then you'll notice no one's around. <laughs> sure. And sometimes it's like, Oh, my mother used to say that to me. <laughs> and it's like, Oh, that's my mom. Like, do I actually even agree with that? Like, I don't. Okay. Yeah. That's not even me. You know, yeah. we're exercising this, this power of choice. Yes. Which is, you get to choose everything. You get to choose how you want to feel, think, um, how much money you want to make in your business, how you want to show up, how, how you want to, uh, present your, like everything for the most part, everything is really a choice in our lives. And so if you're only selling $1,000, $2,000 packages, you're ready to move into that high ticket place. Like where, where are you connected to your self-talk? Do you know how to intercept And um, you know, as we wrap up here, I know we're running out of time, but Malika, do you have maybe one strategy you can share with this audience that can help them, you know, start to connect with their inner voice? If they're not, if they're kind of confused about who it is, even though it's there, we just may not be connected to it. I think the best way to connect to that voice is to be quiet, Mm -hmm. making space to listen regularly. So that means slowing down. It means paying attention to your breath. You know, if you don't have a meditation practice, if that's something you've never tried, but you're curious, like do it, (laughs) try it, you know, use use an app. But even, and you mentioned this earlier, it's like asking yourself those questions, checking in with yourself, like, and asking real questions of like, how am I today? How do I feel about this thing? And then really waiting to hear a genuine response from from yourself, you know, that's how you can start to recognize your voice. So I think if you want to, you know, show up differently in your sales conversation and have a, a connection to your inner voice, Give yourself a buffer before that conversation begins to be quiet and collect your presence. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's just a couple minutes, but don't go straight from your email into, you know, the sales thing. Like, yeah, take a moment, connect to your breath, connect to your why, your deeper purpose, and really set an intention. How do I want to feel right now? How do I want to feel in this conversation? And then after that, you know, talk is over, you log off. Same thing. Don't go straight to your email, to your phone, to like, that's how we diffuse our power and our, our energy. Like take a moment to take stock. How did that go? How am I feeling now? Acknowledge what just happened. Honor the fact that you are sharing yourself and your work with the world, you know, give yourself that, that kind of acknowledgement and closure before you dive into something else so that you can really, um, build on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. I mean, really, it's just simple. It's as simple as I, we, we overcomplicate it. Yeah. I think there's some, there's magical strategy or technique. Now, how do I connect my inner voice? It's like, well, no, you actually, what I'm hearing is like, do you need to do less? Do less. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not another task on your to-do list. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but to just stop and pause. And I love how I, I forget the exact words you used, but you said it was it was going to come up, like, let it come up versus like thinking, thinking, thinking. And then this is, this is what I see my clients go into as well. They're, I see this, I see this happening. They're like, I'm like, okay, stop. 
just this is already this is what got you into this mess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's just pause and and you can use a you know one thing I, I a metaphor I give my clients is imagine an elevator in your head that's moving down slowly mm. past your your shoulders into your body and sort of sh- shifting your attention, but that's just one way to do it. There's so many different ways to, to shift your attention in, but, but first things first is creating the space, being yeah. willing to create that space. Cause I think, honestly, I, I honestly think a lot of people are unwilling yeah. to they're like, well, I have, I have five kids. I have two jobs. I have to go make money. I have to cook dinner. Yeah. Well, don't you also have to <laughs> like, yeah, it takes some effort and it can be uncomfortable too. If you're not used to that, right. It's it can be awkward or mm-hmm. stuff can come up that you don't want to come up. Right. And that's, mm-hmm. I think that can keep people from, <laughs> from going inward because they don't want to encounter what's there. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely worth it. Yeah. What's on the other side is yeah. everything we want, right? There's, there's a reason we're focused on this thing, whether it's like, okay, I want to hit 30,000 this month. I want to hit six figures this month or this year or seven figures this year. It has to, it has to become, come from first a place of willing to make that space to do the things that are going to require you. That's, that's going to be required of you to get to that place. And I know that can be the hardest because we get on these, we get in these patterns and we wake up and eat breakfast, wrong calls all day. We're doing meetings. Next thing you know, it's time to go to bed and we've accomplished nothing new and we get stuck in these patterns. So yeah, first making that space to check in with yourself, like what's working, what's not working. I love how you said like pause before the calls, pause before the emails. I remember I used to get up out of bed this is back when I was in corporate, throw myself out of bed, throw myself in a shower, get to work is somehow <laughs> in an hour. And I'm realizing now as, as a business owner, I wake up, I used to wake up an hour before meeting stuff. I was like, I was like, that's not even enough. Now it's, now it's 90 minutes mm. now, and it turned into two hours before me. Like I needed, I was like, how much time do I need to like get my energy up, right. you know, full, feel active, get that. And then start my day versus like you know, we're jumping out of bed with, with bed hair. Or whatever. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but I know, uh, Malika has a free gift to start to empower you all on this journey inside. So Malika, would you tell this audience what you have for them, the free gift you have for them? Yes. I created a guided reflection audio to help you connect to that inner voice. So exactly what we're talking about. It's a very short practice, about 10 minutes that you can do every day or whenever you want to take that space to go inward so that you can get more familiar with your own power and presence. Um, Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it. (laughs) So I hope that people, that you take advantage of it and um, experience that that connection with yourself. Yeah. I think this is a question probably most of the viewers here are asking, how do I do that? Yeah. That's what it takes. If I need to connect to myself, be present, however you want to word it, pause, then what? This is it. She's got a free gift here for you to start to, to use right now today to start to tap into your inner voice so that you can get an alignment with how you want to show up to, to get the results that you want. And, and that's really, it's way more, what, what's the point of the perfect system, the perfect funnel, if you are feeling good. Yeah. Now, I set a boundary for myself. I was like, I will never send out an email or to client or whoever. I will never send an email. If I'm feeling a certain way, if I'm feeling angry, mm-hmm. sad, resentful, it's like, I just don't do it. Cause <laughs> Yeah. Not going to bring back and, and maybe you can start creating boundaries with yourself as well. Right. Yep. So go scroll to the bottom of this webpage, click the link so that you can start to tap into your inner guidance, your inner voice, and you can start to shift that around to empower yourself. So this link is only available for the next 48 hours. So go get it now, start to use it today. And Malika, so, so just such a pleasure speaking with you, such a powerful topic and just one that we absolutely all need as coaches and consultants. So thank you so much.
Thank you. It was my pleasure. I, I nerd out on this. I could talk about it all day long. So <laughs> I really appreciate it. glasses. For Heidi. <laughs> exactly. Thanks everyone for watching. All right.